Okay, welcome back to Rated M. I am your host, DR. We still have in our studio, we still have Amy Walton with domestic violence. Uh, she speaks very heavy about the signs. Now we're going to talk about that plan that you have to have before you leave. Because a lot of uh, your friends will say, just leave, just leave. But you need to have that plan to leave. And uh, it's hard. Sometimes women have to leave their own home. Their very own home. Because I know like with me, well, you have to leave him. How can I leave him when he's in my home? You know, it's like, do I leave my home and I lose everything and he's really the intruder? He needs to get out. I need to find a way to get him out of my home. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that plan that our listeners need to know how to go about? Okay, that's a good question. Um, the first thing you have to know is your plan is that you are going to leave this person. There's no playing around. Not, I think I'm going to do it. No, you're going to do it. That's your first check off that list. You have to leave. And you have to have called um, a women's center or the, uh, the, the hotline. There's a national hotline that I'll, you want me to give it now? Or like yes, you up. can. So it's 1-800-799-SAFE. Okay, 1-800-799-SAFE. And that's a national hotline in America. So you call them, you give them um, your zip code, and they'll find um, a safe house for a you. A safe house agency that you can call, the 24-hour hotline. They're all over. I didn't know that. I didn't know. I was so young and naive. I didn't know. Um, it's funny, like a, a, one of the police officers that came to our house said to me, um, you know, Amy, when you're really ready to leave this joker, that's what he called him, when you're ready to leave him, after you call the women's center, call me, and I'll personally arrest him myself. He was my angel. Mm. No other officer did that. And in fact, at that time, they didn't start doing domestic violence training on, on um, police officers. They just started that afterwards. I know my daughter's a, a law enforcement, and she, they always have to go in training yeah. for uh, domestic violence and how to handle it because now they're walking into stuff. And they're getting shot and killed going in to rescue somebody else. Yeah, and you never know who is a perpetrator, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, the other thing is after you call and find out um, what, um, what type of help you need. So everyone individually needs, you know, different things. So sometimes if you have pets or you have animals, you need to find a shelter. If you need a shelter, a shelter. I didn't need a shelter because um, he was arrested on the spot and he got a lot of charges enough to keep him in jail for a while. But if that's not the case and he can make bail, let's say he is wealthy or whatever, someone's going to make bail for him, you need to know where to go. Um, so they'll, they'll provide shelters for you. And it's... You know, I can't tell you where it is, but they'll find shelters a safe place for you. So, um, and that's, you know, that's the plan. You need to get your, um, all your documents ready to leave. You need, in fact, if you're in a relationship and you're, you're contemplating leaving and you think that this guy will or this woman is going to do something with your documents, let's say you're not a, a legal um, resident mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you need to keep all your paperwork together, keep in your car, keep some safe things, your, your children's birth certificates, your social security cards, because they will use that all against you. Get duplicates in the items or give them to another um, person. Yeah, or, you know, get a, if you have a, a, someone that you can trust, in my case, I, I'm sure I had people I could trust that I could, and they're probably listening right now, it's like, you could have trusted me, but I couldn't because I knew they were going to get too upset and just, like, either yell at me or yell at him or whatever. So I didn't really trust anybody with anything. So I basically had to trust a, a stranger. And, and plus, he threatened my whole family. I'll kill them if they even try to. So, I, you know, in order to protect them, I didn't want to get them involved. And I know that's a lot of, you know, it's a big question my family has. Like, why didn't you tell us? I'm like, I couldn't. And you can't tell, you can't tell your family member because you have to know that you have to leave because they are going to be upset with you. They are going to be upset with that person. They are going to intervene. At least someone will. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that um, you got to go. That's it. Mm -hmm. You need to go. Mm -hmm. One question before you finish your story. When this happened to you with the choking, was this like in the nighttime, the daytime? It was nighttime. Oh, it was nighttime. So yeah. you had to just go through the rest of the night just. It was like the worst night of my life. Although he took his hands off me, but it wasn't a good one. So you just had to act like calm. You just yep. had to stay calm until yep. the next day. Uh, you know, um, prior to that, I was starting to become numb to the beatings, really. Because mm -hmm. I knew it was coming. I said, I don't, I'm going to die here. Mm -hmm. Why not call the police right there after he let you go? I didn't. 
Well, I didn't have a phone. Oh. There were no cell phones for me. There was no house phone for me. I was a sole provider in that home. He couldn't keep a job. He kept fighting and getting um, fired, and, and he just took full advantage of this woman, <laughs> me. <laughs> I had two children at the time working, paying rent, and I just couldn't even afford a phone. So I couldn't, I had to go to a phone booth far away, you know, when I made how up the line. How long ago was this, and how did you become an advocate after that happened? Um, well, I didn't start becoming a, well, a certified advocate till like, uh, five years ago. But before that, like, as soon as I got out and I, and I learned about the Women's Center, I started advocating right there. When I, see, when I saw women with black eyes and I saw them um, afraid of their boyfriends, I started advocating right there. I'm like, there's no way another woman is going to go through this in front of my face and me not say nothing. God gave me a mouth. I'm going to speak. Mm -hmm. God got me through that. I am going to speak. Give them that number again, please. 1-800-799-SAFE. 1-800-799-SAFE. So how many years was the abuse? Um, about two years, two long years. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the details of that night. So this horrible thing happened in the middle of the darkness of, of night. Um, did he sleep next to you? Did you, were you able to go to a couch somewhere or remove yourself? Like what, was he apologetic the next day? Like what, what was sort of like the step-by-step -step process until the sun came up and you could sort of regroup and Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. I just remember it wasn't a good night. I yeah. blocked the rest of it out. Yeah. I really did. And I can tell you what the room smelled like. I can tell you the temperature of that night. I can tell you how dark it was. I can tell you how evil he looked, but I can't remember the rest. Yeah. But I know by morning, the honeymoon was already in. So maybe at some point he was back in the room. I imagine that he was. When you say the honeymoon was back, you mean like he was nice to you yes. the next morning? Yes. And I'm so sorry. I can't believe I got that far. Every apology was better than the other one, mm -hmm. the last one. To match the crime that yeah. preceded it. He's like, I can't believe that I did that. He was talking like it was another person. Like, really? I can't believe I did that. And I, I'm saying I can't believe it either. And I want him to apologize because I want this to be over and I don't want it to escalate another day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it would, but most of the time it, it, it didn't. He would just start apologizing right away. Well, not right after, a few hours or. So what would you say when he apologized? Would you just say uh, you understand or you would just listen or look at him? What would you say when he's apologizing? Sometimes it was, I understand. Because like, especially at the beginning, because like I said, I grew up that way. Mm -hmm. You know, to see all that and thinking like, well, maybe this is just that type of guy. And the norm. Yeah. Although I was never, ever in an abusive, you know, relationship before, but it was just odd that I was in it then, but didn't really realize it. So I accepted apology, you know, because I felt like, oh, I'm not perfect, you know. So, you know, that much I knew that, um, you know, no one is perfect. So did he start off verbally or he start off physically at first? Always verbally. Always verbally at first? Always. I knew when it was coming. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I couldn't get away. Because once he started getting comfortable hitting me, there was no getting away. Mm -hmm. He would grab me. and even There was even a time when the policeman knocked on the door because neighbors would call. You know, he knocked on the door and um, he covered my mouth. And he told me, you better not say anything. Mm -hmm. And I did it. Now, were these your children's father as well? My daughter's father. Mm -hmm. Did the children have any clue to what was going on, or you, you kind of hid it? My older son knew. Oh, he knew? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My older son knew. Mm -hmm. So I was always trying to console him and um, tell him it's going to get better. You know, mm -hmm. mommy loves you. Oh, he's just mad, you know. Mm -hmm. But inside, I felt like a horrible mom because here I was letting my son see this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you're anyone in this situation is completely not at fault, and there's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely no fault. But I'm wondering about the issue of shame and about how um, victims of domestic violence handle that emotion. And, <laughs> you know, like just to hear you, because I'm a mother too, and to hear you with your son and, um, 
trying to sort of rationalize it for him so to make it more that he can take it right and yeah. and just what you said feeling like a terrible mom and the then it's so strange because it seemed like sometimes people who have come from verbal or physical abuse you would think that they know better not to want to do that right. to the next but for That's some so. reason <laughs> it's like they I don't know what, what's in them, especially when they, you know, experience being hurt or hit or talked to. And, and, and so. yes, and then the guy that did the last time that I just said, this was it, this wasn't happening, um, his father used to beat his mother all the time. Right. And he hated it. He hated it. But he did it to me. That's I would what be I sitting, understand. then all of a sudden a fist will fly, and I'd be like, what the? What just happened? What did you say? It just happened. Yeah. There was one time I was in, and it's my house. I was in the um, shower, and I was showering, and all of a sudden I heard this bang, and he kicked the door, and he was like six foot five, two hundred and say thirty, two hundred and fifty pounds, mm -hmm. and because he thought I had another man in the house, but I didn't hear the door. I didn't hear the door because I was in the shower. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think go through their mind? When they've been through this situation and seen their mom be abused, what makes them trigger to feel that it's okay to abuse someone else? Um, the lack of addressing those issues. Mm -hmm. You need counseling. Mm -hmm. You definitely need counseling. And, and they have anger issues, right? Yeah, and definitely. anything could set them off. Yeah, and but the, 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 the sad part is like, okay, listeners, don't get discouraged. But when the court mandates that they get counseling, and they get their little bit of counseling. That's not enough. That's just court mandated to do. They're just doing to appease the courts. But don't trust them and think, oh, they got their counseling, they're gonna be better. Well, they may seem better, but that's not enough. You really need, now I did, I did more than two years of counseling. While he was you know, incarcerated, I, um, I went through the Women's Center and I continued to go to empower myself and understand that it wasn't my fault to get rid of that shame. I still cry because it's hard to, repeat the things and relive them. Um, but my son fully understands that I love him and all those, we talk about it all the time, you know, um, that he understands that it's wrong, that it's, it's although he saw it, statistically they say that when um, children see that, mm -hmm. you know, abuse, chances are they, they may become that way, mm -hmm. not all the time, but right. sometimes they become abused or they become abusers mm -hmm. or they just- But if you talk to them and, and start give, and having them have some type of counseling right. so that they don't go into that. Now, I worked with a young lady. Oh, she was just a sweet young lady. And she came in one day and we heard, um, and they said her sister was killed and come to find out that her sister's husband, she had five kids, and he was, it was domestic violence all the time. He was beating her up. The last time that he beat her up, she, he was locked up for three months. When he got out, he came in the house, busted the door down, and stabbed her 24 times. But, and, but the thing is, is that it's a new, it's a different day. Like, see, way back with me, if the cops were able to get there, maybe it would at least scare them off. But these guys are doing time and coming out mm -hmm. and killing the victim. Yeah. I mean, I've read some terrible statistics. You know, if a man threatens your life, the statistics are pretty bad that they'll try to do that. Yeah. Is that is that accurate? I mean, what, I mean, and, and I'm wondering how many women stay in these relationships trying to fend off that outcome. Yeah. Uh, um, well, you know, I haven't read that statistic. Doesn't mean that it's not true. It's not valid. But I'll tell you what, if a guy threatens your life, you, you shouldn't go back with him because for someone to even utter those sounds, that's pretty deep. That's, wow. Just he's going to gonna say it. kill you. Wow, that's, that's really deep words. Mm. That's just like I know a guy, he, he has a friend that went to jail for 10 years for stabbing a, a female up, somebody he was dating. And he's home now, and every time you hear a story, he's now kicking it with this girl and kicking it with that, that girl. And I'm just like, even when you 
when you come home from knowing that you hurt somebody like that, how are you just so quick to just want to start dating again someone else with this kind of history? That's door norm. That's door norm. Mm -hmm. You know, they see it. You know, they. How is he out? How is he out after that? I mean, it's. it's I don't know how that happens. I mean, I've heard, um, I, I know someone who actually threatened to kill his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend, and their baby, and their whole, at a party. Family. Yeah. And, again, don't get discouraged, listeners. Continue to press on every single time he threatens you. Continue to make that complaint. Continue because, and continue to pray that he will be served with some time. Well, this guy just got slapped with a terrorist threat charge. No jail time, no nothing. But a terrorist threat is a true crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is serious. And make sure when you go to the court and you explain to them how he made you feel, don't forget how he made you feel. Tell them how you, don't just go, oh, he just said this. Don't just say, oh, he, he just, just said. said this. No, tell them how he made you feel. Don't hold back those tears. Let them know that he really hurt me with those words. Because those scared. words, they're scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. For someone to say that they're going to kill you and stab you and shoot everybody else up, mm -hmm. that's someone you need to stay away from and you need to be protected from. You hear that, listeners? You really need to stay away from that. And she's going to give you, um, is this the number? What's this yes. number that you were want to show them? Okay. Just read it off to them because okay. they're not going to be able to see it. Okay, it's 1-800-799-SAFE. That's the national house. And this is what, an extension? No, that's just SAFE. That's the numbers of safe, so it's, um, it's just easier to remember safe instead of 7233, but it's 1-800-799-SAFE. And, uh, and what you're saying is, Amy, to get out of there, the first chance you get yeah. to yeah. get out. Yes, I thank you so much for telling your story. I felt it, and I know where, you, you, where, you were com where you're coming from to be, I was strangled too. And I didn't tell my family because I was embarrassed. Yeah. And, but so. when I told them, that's honestly, that's when it stopped because they went after him. And, and then what made it so bad, we also worked at the same place. So he was threatening me at work. He was doing everything. And back then, they didn't honor stuff in dealing with domestic violence. I was like, oh, you're, you're causing problems in the workplace. And then I, I almost lost my job. But I was told to tell my bosses in the, in the HR department mm -hmm. is that there's a lawyer involved. And if you terminate me because he's threatening me here on the job, banging me up in the corner like he would watch me when I was going to the ladies' room, get up and go and beat me up in the hallway at the workplace and then go back and sit down and do his work like nothing happened. Wow, he was that comfortable. Yeah, he wow. was that comfortable, yes. So I've been through it too and not know, but once I opened up my mouth, it slowed up and then I end up getting a boyfriend because he was stalking me for a while when I would go out mm -hmm. and then I end up with a boyfriend and then my boyfriend told him okay and it put him in line yeah and he backed off but the guys today would be like come on and then they come out with a gun right. you know at least when with me they didn't back then they were willing to fight things out and not use a gun. Yeah, right, right now, they just... They, they just don't stuff. care, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's scary. You never know what they're going to do. You never know. Yeah.